Hey guys, welcome to Squat University, and this is the greatest squat tutorial ever. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm with a guy who knows a thing or two about squatting. We're gonna go through some of the cues that Martins likes to use whenever he's squatting big weight um, so you guys can learn how to perfect your technique and reach your true potential mm -hmm. at home. So Martins, what type of things do you like to think about whenever you're getting under the barbell? So whenever I get on the barbell and I do a squat, um, number one is bracing. You always talk about this. Mm -hmm. That's been huge for me, taking a deep breath in, contracting that abs, pulling the rib cage down, and simultaneously, and I think it's important, retracting my shoulder blades and tightening up my back equally as I build that force in the front. So the two forces balance each other out. Second, I uh, initiate through the hips, reaching back. I try to imagine reaching for the wall behind me or whatever's behind me. And then I imagine that the earth is made of paper and I'm trying to rip it apart. So I'm pushing my feet open, my knees open, and that uh, activates my glutes better. There you go. So a couple of different things that you can think about at home whenever you get on the barbell. I'm gonna have Martins show us a couple reps and I'm gonna fine tune a couple different parts of his squad and really point out things that you guys should be thinking about as well. So first things first, getting under the barbell. Now obviously, whenever we're doing a squat, people think too much about the actual movement of the squat. But if you're not starting in the correct position, you're not going to be moving as well as possible. So whenever you get under the barbell, you wanna pull your shoulder blades together and create as much stiffness in this area as possible so that you create a nice shelf for the barbell. From here, you're gonna get under, brace your core, and then stand up, get nice and tight here, okay? If you're walking out huge weight, you can't wait until you start your squat to get stiff. You wanna get stiff first. So from right here, he's set, he's gonna brace his core, breathe, brace, and then go through his squat motion and then powerful back up. Now, a couple things to think about. With his feet right now, he's gripping the ground, jamming his big toe into the ground. You wanna create an arch in your foot, and even if you have a flat foot, you wanna stay balanced across what's called the tripod. Body weight spread evenly across all three parts of the foot. Big toe, little toe, and heel. Very good. Okay. Again, he's initiating with his hips. Now the amount of hip hinge that you're gonna take is gonna depend on the, on the type of squat that you're performing. Okay, you can put this back. Very good. Now, if you're doing a high bar back squat, which is what Martins is doing, that hip hinge is not going to be extremely large compared to if you're doing a low bar back squat. If you wanna know whether or not you're taking enough hip hinge, you're gonna view your squat from the side and we'll do this with his second set. And what you wanna see is whether or not that barbell's tracking over your mid foot. If you take too big of a hip hinge, that chest is gonna fall forward in compensation and that bar is gonna track over your toes. A body that's not in balance is not gonna be able to produce efficient force and power. So you always wanna maintain that barbell over the middle of your foot. Okay? So we talked about foot stability, grabbing the ground, creating a little bit of that tension before the bar ever moves, moving with the hips to start off, breathing and bracing, How'd that feel right there? Felt good. Felt, Felt really good. good. I also uh, narrowed up my hand placement. Mm. Uh, elbows hurt as much as they did when I went wide, but that's yeah. always what happens. I start wide, I bring in closer. Uh, felt really good. Another thing I, w I wanted to uh, point out, yeah. um, I also, as I pack my upper back, I personally like to pull my elbows down mm. towards the floor. Other squatters like to flare them up. Uh, it really depends on personal preference. I find that if you have an issue with leaning too far forward, with a bar path going too far forward, which is something I've struggled with. Um, driving my elbows downwards helps me be a little bit more upright, helps keep the force uh, in line with my spine. So one thing that I'll cue a lot of lifters is that you want those elbows squeezed back and in line with your torso. The big thing we see some athletes is they have their elbows really far back, kicked back, and that's not gonna be very good on your shoulder or on your elbow or they're also, the other side of that compensation is when athletes are just so stiff getting under the barbell that they have to be right here and almost can barely get a grip. I'm sure you see a lot of yeah. strong men like yourself that just are so stiff upper body that they can't really get into a good position oh, or have wow. to be so wide. And what that does is place excessive stress on the elbow. So Which you is see kind a lot of what of I'm dealing with. Yeah. 
And that's why we're also, if you're having that issue, look at the pecs, look at the lats. The lats were a big thing that we were working with with Martins. And the more flexibility you have in your lats, the greater ability you'll have to externally rotate and get into a good rack position. Yeah, and after rolling out those lats, I was able to go from the widest position out here to all the way in here. And less stress on the yeah. elbows, right? Uh, it's about equal stress equal, on my elbows, stress. but so it wasn't worse. It's, it wasn't worse, but considering <laughs> I was able to go from the widest position to in, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know about what you think about this, but when I find when I drop my elbows, I can also initiate my lats better. I yeah. can drive, pull on the bar downwards into my body, which just helps uh, create tension in my torso. I think the big thing that people need to understand is that when we talk about bracing the core, <sighs> Uh, before the lift starts. We often think core of just the yeah. rectus abdominis or six pack muscles, but really core is front, sides, back, the lats. Those Ooh. lats, you raise your arm up. You got those lats, they're these big V-shaped muscles that attach all the way up here onto your humerus and run all the way down here. And when you pull down, like you're doing a squat and create a lot of stiffness, those lats are very powerful uh, muscles that can create a lot of torso stiffness and lock versus, things in. Versus if you don't flex them, you're gonna have a squat that looks like exactly. this. Exactly. So, so if you boom. have a problem with getting into your squat bottom when you're moving a lot of heavy weight and your sort of back collapses forward, or you're just unable to, when you're coming up, maintain that good stiffness, you know, really think about your lats and when you get under the barbell, squeezing back and down and just creating as much torso stiffness as possible, whether that is with 80 kilos, like we're using right here, 85 kilos, or like we're this man can squat heavier. 750 pounds. So, uh, which we showed earlier in the in the video today. So, um, yeah, what do you want next? Uh, just a, uh, I'd, what's that, reds? Yeah, we got some, 25 kilo yeah. plates. Yeah, let's do some of those. Reds. Instead of the green, just the red, yeah. Yeah. That's fine, it's a good job. There you go. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> Last, so a week ago, that weight I just did was the heaviest I could get up to because uh, my tailbone hurt way too much. Today, didn't hurt as much, so I'm gonna add a little bit more weight just to test it out. I didn't feel any pain actually in that one, which is really good because it was excruciating before. That's good. That's really good. All right, so we are going to view Martin's next squat from the side and see whether or not he's in balance, and I'm able to show you guys sort of how he initiates his squat. The thing we don't wanna do is initiate that squat by driving the knees forward. Now. Wall, when you hinge those hips back, the knees will bend. So it's not a complete hinge from here like you would if you're doing an RDL. So the knees will bend, but the hips should initiate and that's going to keep your body in balance and limit that forward shift that can push you off balance. What, what I like to tell people is the knees bend, but they don't move. Moving as in moving forward or back, like he said, the mm -hmm. knees shift forward. I keep them in place as my hips move back. Yeah. And then my knees start to push forward after that initiation. So the knees will go forward, and especially if you're trying to do a deep squat, don't try to hold your knees back from moving forward. The knees need to come forward if you wanna stay balanced in the bottom of a deep squat. So the whole knees should never pass the toes is a complete myth. It's not about if, but when the knees go past the toes, that make all the difference. And in order to stay balanced, again, bar over the middle of your foot when viewed from the side. In a deep squat, those knees will eventually need to come forward. And the amount of that will just be dependent on the person, their torso to femur length, oh, the amount of ankle mobility they have. So you'll get some athletes, yeah. like a lot of Olympic lifters specifically, that are doing like a front squat. Yeah. And because of their torso length to femur length, their knees are well past their That's toes. Fascinating. Whereas some people, they don't have to, but it's all about staying balanced. And in doing so, you'll find what's right for your body. That's very fascinating. The way I personally like to time it out is to have my knees shift in front of my toes when my hips uh, line up with my knees mm -hmm. or get below. So like if my, this top hand is my hips, like my hips go back, 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 my knees go forward. Right about here is where that knees, the knee shifts way forward and mm -hmm. then back. Yep. So let's watch this from the side. We'll take out, uh, so the second set, so we got 115 kilos on right now. Gosh, I hope it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so Martin's gonna get nice and stiff, tight in this position, then he's gonna lift the barbell from the rack. Good, he's gonna take two to three steps back, establish his squat stance, jam those big toes down, breathe, brace, hips are gonna initiate the movement, and then he's gonna squat straight down then drive straight up. 
Very good. You can see that barbell is staying over the middle of his foot, meaning his body's in balance, and that's gonna allow him to create efficient force and power and just perform to his greatest potential. Now, one thing to also think about is the hips and chest are going to rise at the same rate on the ascent. And this is gonna limit that problem. So the hips and chest are gonna rise at the same rate. A lot of times you'll see athletes will have that squat fault called a good morning or a stripper squat fault where the hips just rise really, really fast and that chest drops forward. So a cue to think about for some people if you're having that problem, what do you like to think about? Imagine having a giant building leaning up against you and you wanna keep your back flat against the building as you're pressing it up. Yeah, one time, some that works, a good cue that works for some people is to think about just driving that back straight up. Drive the barbell through the roof. And in doing so, the chest and hips are gonna rise at the same rate. Don't think just hips. So when you get down to that bottom position, don't think just about driving those hips up because in doing so, sometimes you'll lose that stability in that upper body. How are you feeling? Uh, really good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. And I was maybe one other cue. Yeah. Is uh, I like to think about the, in the just the first the first half of that squat where your hips are below the knees mm -hmm. to about halfway up. Yeah. I like to imagine that I'm in the leg press because on the leg press you'll feel your back firmly against the pad. You don't want mm -hmm. just your hips against the pad. You want your whole spine firmly pressed against the pad. So I like to imagine that I'm pushing against something with my entire back. Yeah. I like that cue. Now, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring in Ed Cohen's cue of uh, <laughs> open up the tank. Um, the oh, idea open the tank. <laughs> open up your tank. So the idea behind what he's saying with that famous line is that when you are initiating your squat, you're literally opening the hips from as high as possible yeah. to then maintain that knee in line position so that as you squat down, you're not getting any of this wobble around. Um, we obviously want to do so to a point to where we're not losing that foot position because the big toe needs to drive down into the ground the entire time. Um, but in doing so and creating that hip tension at the very start, it's going to allow your body to just open up at the hips and keep that pressure off the knees. What are some things that you think about um, as far as your knee position? You see some athletes that think it's okay to allow their knees to cave in whenever they squat. I hate that, yeah. Why? I, per I yeah. personally hate that. I don't know if it's wrong, but uh, I think valgus knees uh, you're not going to be using your glutes to their maximum. Uh, to, I like to think about a squat as a symphony. You want all of your body working together, not just one muscle group taking over and then the other muscle group shutting off. So valgus knees, knees caving in, the glutes tend to shut off. They're not working to their fullest potential. So I personally like to think by pushing my knees out towards my pinky toes or at the very least the middle toe. Mm -hmm. Without, I think when people think knees out the toes, they think it's enough to point the knees to the big toe. But that's what the, you know, then that's when they cave in. Yeah. So I like to push them outwards. I don't know if that's right. That just works well for me. I think that's right in my opinion. And here's why. Whenever people allow their knees to come in, sometimes people will justify that by saying, well, they're going to their adductors. And here's why. The adductors, which run on the inside part, especially your adductor magnus, which is a two joint muscle, meaning that it crosses your knee joint and your hip joint. It's a powerful hip extensor, which allows you to extend your hips and stand back up. But just because that muscle is a powerful hip extensor doesn't mean that we just negate biomechanics and maintaining proper joint alignment. Because the hips are important, the knee joint position is important too if we want longevity and to keep our knees pain free. So like you said, it's a symphony. Every single part of your body has to work together to create harmonious sound which is our perfect movement that allows us to create and find what our potential for our body is to produce strength and power. So we want to maintain that alignment of your body and not just think about one or two muscles, but all the muscles working together to keep proper joint alignment. That's how we not only squat big weight, but we do so for a long time because we promote resiliency mm -hmm. in the way in which our body moves. It's interesting that people, I've never heard it said that they go valgus because of adductors. That's one of the ways people, I think, justify I, it. I've always figured the adductors would work better with the knees out wider because the muscles stay stretched longer and you get a longer use out of it. Exactly. Versus the knees cave in right away, then that use is done. They're shortened, then there's nowhere for the muscle to pull anymore. Exactly. Whereas if you keep the knees out, they stay longer for a longer period of time, getting more uh, pull out of the entire range of motion of the squat. Exactly. If you think about it like this, your bicep does two things. It flexes here and it can help flex the arm. Mm. But the bicep doesn't have to do both at the same time. So the adductors can work really plenty hard to help extend the hip, 
without also pulling the knee in. Yeah. So like you said, is everything needs to stay in alignment. The adductors can work really hard to help produce hip extension without the knee caving in. That's awesome. So everything's got to work together. Glutes, adductors, hips, hamstrings, quads. That's how we get that quality movement. I dig it. There we go. More squats. <laughs> All right, let's watch one more set of squats with a little bit heavier weight. What do you want to jump up to? Um, Maybe just the greens, because that's the heaviest I've gone in two weeks or okay. three weeks. Yeah, let's see what it feels like. Uh, you know, only one of the reps hurt my tailbone, and that's when I really try to squeeze my uh, glutes. So then I started cheating by only using my quads. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while we're going through this, um, by the time this video comes out, Martins and I are working through a number of different injuries, upper and lower body. Um, so that's why we're only gonna go to a certain weight today and not push it too heavy. If you wanna check out and see all the different things that we are doing to help fix Martins' body up so that he can perform at World's Strongest Man pain-free, uh, go check out those videos, part one and part two on uh, Squat University YouTube. All right, so we have 135 kilos on the bar right now. Wow, I was gonna say nobody knows. That's my usual line, but. Just shy of 300 pounds. He's jumped in and he's got the perfect <laughs> math. How much is this? Nobody Just shy knows. of 300 pounds. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> no one knows. There's a bunch of kilos and no one from the US knows what's going on. <laughs> So maybe one way I could stop my elbows from hurting is to stop bringing my hands in so much. I don't know what you think. You know, I think it's all about sort of what is optimal for creating this back stiffness. Because I mean, I definitely feel the strongest here. Yeah. But my elbows in this position take a toll. Yeah. So I think until we can get those elbows to where they're pain free in this position, yeah. I'll probably have you squat with a little bit wider. Okay. That way we can still train what we can train okay. without placing too much stress I'm gonna on try that. that yeah, try it. Yeah, they, they hurt. Yeah, yeah. The last thing I want to do is make those elbows hurt I while, we're, while we in. still make improvements in yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That was a good one. Nice. So fourth and fifth were best? Fourth and fifth were best. Second one, you shifted a little bit to your left on the way up. It did, yes. I felt like first I went to a right. Yeah. Then my, at least I thought my head, so then yeah. I went here, and then I finally found and it. And we didn't warm up as the same way that you do with yeah. all your other squats, so I don't expect it to be feeling 100% just because we didn't do the hip airplanes or your touchdowns or things like that yeah. that we usually do. And I always do find that as I'm warming up with lighter weights, yeah. it's always a constant adjustment to yeah. try to find my center. And you know what I really like to do, and this is something that I think everyone will else benefit from, is doing really slow tempo descents yeah. on your first couple warm-up sets. Oh, he's taking yeah. that and doing like a good five to even 10 second descent with light weight, obviously, okay. and really feeling for your positions. A lot of times awesome. when we when we're going to our bigger movements, we think that we need to do a bunch of like small corrective exercises yeah. every time to feel symmetrical. Yeah. But sometimes it's just all about just slowing the movement down and feeling for making that cognitive connection, brain yeah. body connection to whether or not maybe that left glute isn't turning on as much or you Very feel a little cool. bit shifted side to side. And I do do that, yeah. but maybe I could do more of that. I think that can be really helpful at just making yeah. sure that you feel symmetrical and you're maintaining as much tension in the hips. That is awesome. I'm yeah. definitely gonna be doing that a little bit more. Cool. That's really cool. All right guys, so that is our squat tutorial. If you wanna see some big squats and watch Martins continue to prep for the world's strongest man, head on over to his YouTube page, give him a subscribe. Um, big lifts to come. There we go. All right, guys, let us know if you have any questions. Let us know in the comments section below. And until next time, guys, happy squatting. Lift some Atlas stones. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have